it's bread week. And with a shortage of yeast and flour, some bakers are having to resort to recipes they've never used before. So using a bread recipe, you have to create an animal. An animal. Animal. Yes, yeah, so it can be any animal you, you want to. It can be any bread recipe that you want to. So you got to think about what kind of animal would you want to make using bread. And you've got seven hours to do that. With an animal. That's a great idea. But what animal? How about... A rabbit. Good. Let's, let's go. Let's bake. So oh, this is an easy baking recipe for bread with no yeast. After you've done that, you'll put in your sugar. This is cane sugar. Then put in some, this is baking powder and salt. Then little by little, We'll add a little melted butter. There we go. So once you've done that, you'll add little by little some milk, if I can dress it up. So you get some milk in. And you'll start stirring it. Benjamin has decided to use a yeastless recipe to create his bunnies, which will be accompanied by the traditional English supplements of jam and butter. Inspired by the giant snails Devon sees in her garden, she is having to use croissant dough due to the lack of both flour and yeast. She is planning on dyeing part of the dough to make the snails look like the ones roaming outside. Whilst baking, Eobo has been reflecting on the week. I'm in year eight, as most of you will likely know, including the teachers who are working a big deal of helping us in school. And Teacher's Day is coming up, Teacher Appreciation Day. So it was Mother's Day and Valentine's Day. No, not Valentine's Day, that already happened. Anyway, to make my bread, I had to, after a failed attempt, which it was too gooey, too liquidy, we made this, we first made the yeast, which started bubbling, and we put in a little less flour than the recipe said, but it's still working. In true Naisley style, Eob is sharing resilience with his second attempt at making teddy, using raisins for eyes and peanuts for buttons. Hopefully this will make a really good animal when we put it in the oven. I am going to make the ocean and the desert. First, I'm gonna make the desert. I'm gonna make a camel, a snake, and a scorpion. The next one I'm gonna make is the ocean. I'm gonna make a starfish, a crab, and a dolphin. Inspired by his science lessons, Blake is going to create two different habitats with a collection of the animals that live there. So there's two key components in bread. 
first one's gluten, second is yeast. So yeast is actually a fungi that takes um, sugars and glucose and turns them into ethanol and into CO2. And it's that CO2 which makes it light and airy, or fluffy. If the CO2 isn't trapped in the bread, it's pointless. So to do that, and to make bubbles and to keep the bread airy, we have to use gluten. Now, it's the gluten which gives it this elastic properties. So to make gluten, okay, you get flour and you add water, and what that does is it combines the two proteins and it makes it into gluten. And what you can see here, we've got some flour, we've got some, been mixed with some water, we've got this dough. So now what hopefully has happened is we've now created some of the gluten, which has made that elastic kind of property of this dough. And what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of some of the starches that we just left with the gluten. Now, if we pass water, okay, tricky. we keep passing water for it, this will get rid of those starches that surround the gluten. And what happens is the water kind of goes cloudy. And you can see what's happening here. This is with all the starch left over not the gluten. Depending on what type of flour you use, depending on how much gluten you left in. Use bread flour. Bread flour uses a lot of gluten because it's trying to trap as many of those, as much CO2 as possible. If you use cake flour, you don't have as much left. More starch. Start to decrease in volume. Start to see now. Elastic stuff that's left behind. Now if you use salt, it actually encourages the gluten to form up here. So that's why you actually add salt to your dough. Now, if you want to make a bread, you want this gluten. If you don't want, if you're making something like a biscuit, you don't want any of this gluten. Okay, so that's why in a biscuit you'd use things like butter or fats, because they cover, they cover the proteins and stop them forming the gluten and kind of making this kind of elastic -y kind of substance. Okay, so I'm putting the two cups of, wait, did I put it all? Of red flour in there and got it all. So I filled it up to one cup because I filled the other cup from two and it's supposed to be three cups. So then I'm gonna put this one cup into the bowl. Having got the measures correct, Beltran is now combining the ingredients to create the dough for his porcupine using breadsticks for spikes. My animal bread is going to be a alligator and it's going to have teeth and eyes and the teeth are going to be used um, with peanuts and the eyes are going to be used with raisins. Rose will use both technique and ingredients to try and pull off her alligator. Hi, my name is Bennett and today I'm going to use a basic pizza dough like this to make a bear. Using a pizza dough recipe, Bennett hopes to recreate a classic teddy bear shape. Bakers will now need to let their dough prove and rise as the gluten traps the CO2 created by the yeast. Hi, this is Bennett and the, the, I think because of the yeast the dough is bubbling so I'm probably just going to pop it. Otherwise, it ain't gonna look good. 
Okay, so this here is Teddy. He is a teddy bear. That's why I named him Teddy. So, the reasons are his eyes. I know, bit, bit uncreative, but still. What do you got to work with? That's his nose. These are his buttons. These are his arms and legs. Since every bear needs us. Can't wait to see him when he's out of the oven. All right, how do you feel about it? I think it's the best one I could have made. Are you ready to put it in the oven? Yes. All right. Okay, go for it. The rabbits are now in the oven, and now I have time to settle down and have a good read. Now in their final shapes, bakers will let their dough bake and I hope it doesn't change the structure too much. Okay, time to pull it out. Mm. Looks nice. Well, that's steady. As you can see, these are my bread bunnies. I am going to enjoy them. I am going to enjoy them with with butter and jam. Mmm. I made the desert and the ocean. I made the camel with my hand here. My the lumps by this, and the neck like this, and the head like that, and I squished that nose. And then I made my finger all around this and put the dough on there. I, it took a while, and I, it got so messy in the kitchen. It's now down to the judges to decide who will be this week's star baker. Welcome to another episode of The Great Naisney Baker. Off. This week was a lot harder for all the contestants, myself included. Um, we are back to discuss the entries and determine the winner. Um, myself, Catherine Berry Clare, and Mr. Paul Hollywood Reardon over there ready to judge and discuss these entries. Over to you, Mr. Reardon. Yeah, this, this week was uh, very tough and challenging, mainly also for the reason that um, due to the quarantine and the lockdown, there didn't seem to be that much yeast in the stores and even flour was uh, sometimes hard and scarce to come by. So some I know that some bakers have had to be quite clever in how they've done it this week. Yeah, I myself went to buy yeast and ended up with nutritional yeast, which I then found out was useless for making bread because it's not active. Um, and therefore, that was a waste of $6. And I had to make a yeastless bread, which wasn't as easy as it sounded. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start off with Eob's Teddy. Oh, I love uh, this. I really love it. I love the shape. I love the videos that he sent in as well. He was very articulate explaining what he was doing and how he'd done it. I also like the fact that he's used other ingredients to kind of help uh, create his teddy. So he's got the peanuts for his buttons. He's got the raisins, I think, for his eyes. Uh, and, you know, it's come out great. It looks quite good. Um, I, I think, think the it, it, it kind of molded a little bit in the oven, didn't it? The before photo yeah. was much more teddy shaped um, than the, the cooked photo. But it does look nice. It looks um, It looks like it would have a nice sponge to it. Nice soft bread. Yeah, I'd say the baker looks pretty good. Um, I mean, it's obviously quite hard to see virtually, but, uh, you know, he said it's good. And, you know, it tasted he, good, yeah. I saw him eat it. Yeah, so, you know, I have to trust him on that. Yeah. Um, I like, I do agree. I like the the buttons and the eyes. And I think that there was a lot of effort that went into the, the shaping and production of this. Because it's not easy shaping um, an animal out of bread. Yeah, especially once you put it in the oven, it kind of starts to move around a bit. You've really got to kind of 
have that in mind from the outset. I think that's probably where he needs to focus. Maybe next time he feels to improve it, you know, think about how it's going to change in the oven. I think about the shaping a bit more. It could be a little bit more um, brown for my liking. I do like a, a, a brown yeah. crust, if I'm honest, especially on these sort of homemade loaves. Right, let's move on to uh, Rose's, uh, it says lizard, but it's actually an alligator. I, I really lizard. like this one. This, look, the, the colour of the top of this loaf, that's the exact crust that I'm looking for. I can imagine that's got a lovely, crunchy texture to the outside, and I, I think it looks quite soft on the inside. I love the teeth. How did she do the teeth and the eyes? They're fantastic. And so the she used, on the back. Um, yeah, she, so she used the peanuts for the, um, the teeth. Now, what I really like here, and this is if you do a head chug or things like that, it's quite a good technique, is if you use scissors and like snip it and you get this kind of spike effect and it works so well there and it kind of really stands out and makes this really look like some kind of uh, reptile, some kind of... It's very insect. symmetrical as well, like the legs are very yeah. even, it, it, it does look brilliant it's, and I, it looks like a lovely baked loaf as well. I'd love to just try some of that bread, it just looks like you see, you know, TV commercial kind of, you know, that's got a golden kind of crust. This, yeah. this for me, in my head, back in my head, I'm thinking potential for Star Baker. Yeah, it is, it is a, a, a very well-crafted loaf. And next we've got Beltran's Porcupine. I love this design. <laughs> I love that they've been very creative with the pretzel sticks to make the porcupine. I wonder if that was the first choice animal or if that was um, a way to, to <laughs> save the bake. It looks, I mean, I think the inside of that bread looks definitely tasty. I like that kind of brown edge to it. But I love the I love the idea of a porcupine, and I think there's been a lot of effort and creativity put into this. I do think you know having it doesn't look like it's risen very much, so maybe that was a yeastless bake. Mm. But also, you know, having breadsticks in a bread, you know, I've got you've got to be some credit there. You know, it's quite visually, it's very stunning and kind of how yeah. it stick out in your head. Um, so again, like brilliant, really, yeah, I love it. It's very inventive. All right, um, let's go on to Devon. Um, Devon's, okay, so I can just tell you a bit about Devon. Um, they didn't even have any flour or yeast in oh, wow. their stores. So I they didn't... had to use um, kind of a kind of pre-made uh, croissant dough. Awesome. Croissant. So she bought a croissant, cro <laughs> she bought a croissant <laughs> dough. Um, and so she's, used, she's dyed part of it green um, to kind of help. So she had these, so what I really love about the story as well, she had some like these giants, she's in uh, Singapore at the minute. Oh. And they had these uh, giant snails in the back garden. Oh, uh, inspired by her local neighbourhood. Yeah, exactly. And that's the leaf. That's the leaf from her back garden as well. Um, I love the presentation. I think it's a really inventive presentation. And I like how they've kept the integrity of the bread by putting it on some greaseproof paper, so you can still eat it. She won last week's Star Baker. I do love it. I I love the colour mix, and I love the presentation. Yeah. Um, in my opinion, it could be bigger if it's the size of the leaf. I don't know if the leaves in Singapore are bigger, but that looks quite. Yeah. A, I mean, that's not enough bread for me. I love my carbs, so. No, um, that, that's a, that's just a giant leaf. Or I'd like several snails, maybe. <laughs> right. So let's talk about Mark's loaf. Now this looks delight delicious. I love now, the top. If we're judging this just based upon how it looks. But like again, Mark's life, it looks fantastic. Like I'd love to try some of that right now. It looks great. What the issue is, well, that's the problem. He did his on a Saturday before we actually got the challenge. So, you know, he was just a bit too early there, a bit too keen with the bake. Um, could have waited until he knew what the challenge was before he actually made something. Oh, I do love it. I do. It looks like banana bread. Is it? Do we know what bread yes. it is? It is uh, banana bread. Oh, I love banana bread. That's making my mouth water. It looks delicious, Mark. Lots of points for how it looks and, the, and it does look like it's a good banana bread bake. But unfortunately, I don't think it, it fits the rules <laughs> if we're judging everyone on the same criteria. Yeah, but I just had to, I just had to share that because, you know, it is a very good bake and, you know, he should be proud of what he's made. Just yeah, sure definitely. Just wait until the instru full instructions next time, Mark. Um, okay, Benjamin's Bunnies. Cute. Uh, so presentation. cute. I love, I love the picture with the jam and the butter. I think they look absolutely delicious. I love the whiskers that he's put on them. Moustache, <laughs> funny moustache. He used a useless recipe, which I think explains why it looks maybe quite a bit flat. 
Yeah, and it, that looks very much like the one, the bread that I was attempting with the yeastless bread because it's not meant to brown as much. It doesn't, like, mm. it's just flour and water, basically, with um, baking soda. It doesn't, um, it doesn't brown, well, that, that's what my recipe said, it didn't brown as much. Um, you can also... So I think he's done a great job, then. Yeah, it has done a great job. Um, although it doesn't look as appetising, that sort of bread, does it? Because it hasn't got that nice brown like crusty edge but the nose looks like quite crusty i think um they're quite they're small so maybe that also maybe i don't know it depends how long he baked it for because what i found is that yeastless bread goes hard quite quickly um and you have to watch it to make sure it's not too hard but it looks they look they're presented very well yes uh right then it's bare oh so cute <laughs> I love the eyebrows, cashew eyebrows and smile. Maybe the nuts should have been put in a bit later. They look. That's, yeah, that's what we're going to say. Like, they look a bit overbaked, a bit, but you know, the it's cute. It's very. It is what it's supposed, to, it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be like a teddy bear. It looks like a teddy bear. I like the additions of the the, the pieces to make the um, parts of the bear. It, the bread looks a little undercooked, and the nuts look a little little overcooked mm. so we had this issue last time with Bennett didn't we with the cheese straws do you remember like he'd kind of left yeah. a bit under baked so I think Bennett needs to maybe work on it's making... just an eager, but very yeah. creative effort very beautiful teddy bear he looks very cute Blake wow. is again he's done a tremendous job and has just done so do you remember last time he did all those designs for the cheese and the cheese straws it wasn't just one he just kept gave us loads of different yeah. designs and again, I know that he's actually been like thinking about what he's been doing in science and trying to link in habitats and thinking oh, about the animals that are yeah. in a different habitat. So, you know, you know that I'm kind of like, those things get me. You know? Yeah, you like the science element. He's definitely playing to his audience. I think he's done a uh, kind of like a flat, kind of more flatter bread. Now, I don't know if that's because he hasn't had yeast, um, but it does look like uh, it does look like kind of, kind of useless kind of flat bread rather than uh, something that's risen. Yeah, they look very crispy and not doughy. Mm. But, but so, fantastic animals, really creative shapes, and I love the presentation. This is so creative. What, what I'm well, interested about is if he can, maybe rather than doing lots of things, maybe just use the creativity to just one or two things. Yeah. Um, because I'd love to see kind of like um, maybe that creativity go into like extra details and maybe some of those animals. But I think he's just so creative all the time and he does a really good job. Like I love this, I love the crab, I love the turtles. I, that ocean one, I think, is my favourite. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah so, so, I like the little cactus in the um, presentation for the other app. Yeah. So, who would be your star baker out of the students? Well, I have to say, the one that made me want to eat it the most and the most beautiful presented animal, I think, is Rose's lizard alligator. I think that bread just looks absolutely delicious. It's got everything you want in a bread. It's got a nice crispy outside. It's going to be nice and soft and, and fresh on the inside. And it's definitely hit the criteria for an animal. I think that that would be my favourite. Congratulations, Rose. Very, very good. I look forward to seeing what you can create this next week. If that's your, because that was your first entry, I'm very excited to see the progression you're going to have. Mm -hmm, definitely. Um, oh, right. I didn't mention to the porcupine because I do really love that. <laughs> yeah, porcupine. I think and Blake's. Uh, yeah. And do you know what? There've been so many really I good ones today. All of them. And even like Devon's, like the snail. I, I was super impressed with that. Yeah. Um, let's discuss the adults, Blake. Okay. So we've got Miss Procacci's bunnies here. Bunnies or bunnies? Yeah, they're slightly. Um, a little bit I love this I love the twist of the dough though the one on the left the twist yeah, of so that that's supposed to be like a the back of a bunny oh like if it's sat up oh I love yeah, it like, yeah, I think that's that's a really like elegant way to create a bunny out of a twist I think that's beautiful yeah no it's really elegant I love that um I just feel the other ones have been in the sun a bit too long but, you know yeah, I mean, the sun has only just come out, so everybody is likely to get sunburnt when it first comes out, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so this is the inside of one. Let's have a look. So, yeah, it's got that kind of nice bit of holes there. Tasty. 
It's been out for it's been it's been a few days since we made them, so it's a bit it's a bit dry now. I could taste the burnt earth up, but great effort. Great effort. <laughs> <laughs> I do like I do like the twisty one. I think that's that, that, that's my um The twisty one really brings up the others, I think. Um actually no, the bread's actually really quite nice. Oh good. Um, what you get for the burnt taste is all good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the next one is my tiger. I like it's, it's, I did you have different colour bread? Did you make this by different bread? Yeah. So, well, I use the same bread. Well, I use the same bread recipe, but like in part of it, I put like cocoa powder, and in the pot, I put like paprika. Because what I was trying to do is try and get some stripes, and it didn't quite work. No, uh, I can see stripes. Maybe not as clearly as you wanted them to. But I could definitely, definitely not. There's one darker leg. There's two kind of orangey legs and two kind of paler legs. And then you've kind of moulded the bread once it was cooked to do the shoulder and the head. Uh, yeah, I did afterwards. Um, it, I mean, it didn't come out quite like how I wanted. Um, you know, being Paul Hollywood red, and I kind of let myself down on the bread challenge. <laughs> Probably it's disgrace of the name. Challenge. I, I feel like yeah. I do like the little it's, bone. I think it looks more like a ram's head than a tiger's head. Yeah, it would kind of could be like a light. Yeah, lion. It kind of missed in the oven. It just lost its shape, as it clearly would do. Yeah, um, that's something that a lot of bakers um, probably would have had to think about because knowing what happens when you put things in the oven they do change shape and then we've got your turtle which i absolutely love um i think it's really cute i think it's you know the presentation is fantastic you can see it's a turtle you've had to use a useless recipe which is kind of a whole another thing um now, to be honest here it tasted horrible so, <laughs> no you let yourself yeah. down it, you're yeah. content of a star baker until the uh well i have to be honest with that because i think the cheese straws they were delicious i ate nearly all of them very very quickly the bread because i wanted it to be a bit browned because i do like a nice crispy loaf i cooked it for too long um but because it was useless bread it's not meant to be browned so it was just a bit dry by the time i i baked it too much to get that color um and it was useless bread so it's flour and water basically which is amazing that you can still make bread um but the middle of it was 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 better, but the the hands and the head were just very rock hard because I'd cooked them too long. Oh dear. Well, the, you know, the presentation I think really has kind of made up maybe for that bread. Uh, in terms of Star Baker, it's literally just the three of us. I think your tiger. I, I like the creativity, although it didn't turn out as you like. I think you can definitely see it's a cat shaped animal, and I definitely can see the clear stripes. Um, and you bake that in a nice way. It's got a nice crispy outside. It's not overcooked. It's not undercooked. Did you taste it? Yeah, I've mean, just had some today. It's actually really good. So uh, I, I, I think you could be star baker this week. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mum. Uh, <laughs> good job. On Sunday, from 12 until 8, you will have your next challenge which will be a layer cake challenge. This means you have to have at least two different layers with some kind of filling in between. What type of cake, what type of filling, that's down to you. And wait on Sunday until for your challenge. But remember there's an MIT element to it too. So don't just bake your bread like Mark did this week and not include the MIT challenge. So wait till Sunday to find out what that is. Right, thank you very much. Um, Miss Catherine Berry, Claire. <laughs> You're very welcome. Thanks for having me again. And I can't wait to see next week's offerings. Thank you, guys. See you next week. Bye.